Hi, I'm Mike from Hackaday, and I'm here at the 2018 Hackaday Super Conference with Ted Yapo. How are you doing, Ted? I'm doing great. So I think uh, anybody within the Hackaday community knows you very well because you have been uh, doing amazing projects and uh, have won a few of our contests. Uh -huh. But I think uh, for me primarily, uh, you've made a name for yourself as the first accepted paper to make it through the peer review process for the Hackaday Journal. Uh, what did you uh, write about in your paper? Well, I wrote about uh, a way to compensate for, uh, for leakage in spectrum analyzers, specifically tracking generator leakage. Uh, and this is a, a field that, that really hasn't been explored before. There's a lot of uh, documentation in the literature about calibration for vector network analyzers, mm -hmm. but a, um, a tracking generator and spectrum analyzer is, is a scalar network analyzer. There really hasn't been a lot of uh, information about how to calibrate yeah. those. Well, and I think uh, in speaking with you about it, one of the really interesting things is if you go into people's workshops, you see like really old scopes sitting around because scopes are expensive right. and once you have a chance to get one used, you snatch it up. And I think the same is true for these analyzers because they're a little bit older. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you use it until it stops working. Yeah. You, you buy it used and, and use it for, for years. And uh, some of these things can last a long time. A and, you know, the, the manufacturers are constantly improving hardware. So there's hardware in the field that's, you know, defective because it's just, they just didn't get around to, to fixing the bu bugs in the early versions yet. And, and this is a software way to, in, for one particular an analyzer to get past that. Yeah, and uh, there is a little bit of uh, hardware to go along with it in order to invert phases. Can you talk about that a bit? There is a little bit of hardware. I was able to use a, a commercial off-the-shelf mixer, a frequency mixer, as a uh, frequency inverter. I just drive the diodes with DC one way or the other uh, okay. to, to invert the phase. And uh, it works really well. Mixers are optimized for that. You know, in, in normal use, they just do that millions of times a second. I do it, you know, every few seconds, and it works fine. So I got to admit, when we got that paper, I looked at it, and I'm like, Wow, this is pretty deep for me. And we started, um, the nice thing is it's a peer-reviewed journal. Right. So we started sending it out to peers and uh, uh, several of them said, you know, I really want to be a peer reviewer, but I'm not qualified for this. Um, <laughs> which makes me think about what your background is. So uh, you actually have an engineering physics background. I do, I do have an engineering physics background. I took uh, the core, core um, courses in physics and electrical engineering. And I've uh, been able to apply that in a lot of different fields. I applied it in uh, computer networking, applied it in image processing. I was in, did some financial engineering for a while. So I've just done a lot of things with that background. So I wanted to start off talking about the hardcore things because then I wanted to talk about the play that has gone on. Uh, and you were one of the uh, top placers uh, with a couple of different projects in uh, the coin cell challenge from earlier this year. I was. And one of them was attempting to jumpstart a car with coin cell batteries. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, a, in a CR2477 battery, there's theoretically enough energy to jumpstart a car <laughs> once. Uh, and the problem is you just can't get it out fast enough. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I tried to do is charge supercapacitors that can uh -huh. discharge very quickly. You can certainly start a car with supercapacitors. Um, it still was too, uh, too difficult to extract the energy because supercapacitors have a very high leakage rate. And so as you're extracting energy from the cells, it's kind of dissipating in the, uh, in the capacitors. The next thing I tried was to charge uh, nickel cadmium batteries oh. and use that <laughs> to, to, to start the car. And I couldn't quite get that to work. So although theoretically there's enough power in there to do it, enough energy in there to do it, it's just not practical. Well, I think that's a ton of fun because when you uh, set out to do something practical, uh, you really set so many constraints that, that um, it's almost like putting blinders on. You can't think too outside of the box. Um, what's your feeling about these like more ethereal goals? Like, what, what does that do for creativity and engineering? You, you know, I, I, personally, I think if you're achieving 100% success rate in your projects, especially your personal hobby projects, you're setting your sights way too low. <laughs> you know, these days I try to set for 50%. If 50% of things I try to do succeed, I'm shooting about right in terms of difficulty. And I think that brings out creativity, it brings out um, interesting engineering solutions, and you learn a lot more if you shoot higher than you think you can, you can actually do. I think that's great advice. Uh, now you're speaking uh, about your paper and uh, uh, at Supercon, is this your first time here? This is my first time at Supercon and I'm just blown away. This is, <laughs> this is an amazing experience. The people here, I, I just can't imagine how you could collect so many just amazing people in one place. It's, uh, it's really mind blowing. It's really kind of fascinating to sit down and be next to someone that has landed hardware on the moon. Uh, and then sit down next to someone who has uh, started billion dollar companies. And uh, I, another really nice thing is just having access to the speakers. So thank you so much for um, you know, putting in your proposal and uh, you know, taking the plunge on an unproven journal and being the first one through it. Um, really, uh, these type of actions are what build the Hackaday community. Yep. And uh, I'm really glad to meet up with you today. It's happy to do it. Thanks, Mike. All right.